right, welcome to the third and final review of the evening, a game called uh, Pity Pits. Not exactly sure why they went with pity, since it's not so much pity that's fueling uh, our Dwarven Miner here, but spite and rage. So usual Dwarven emotions. Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> like, um, yeah, you play as this dude named Horatio, who, sure, he's a dwarf. I believe that. He's got the job one. So, at the beginning of the game, a demon steals his girlfriend and drags her down into presumably hell. Um, so, uh, you go after her digging down into presumably hell. Yeah. It's not I'm... a nice place, is what I'm saying. You start out with a copper pick, which sucks, and two health points, which sucks more. <laughs> yes. Um, we were given the Nintendo Switch version of this game, so Galix is on the main here, and he has words. Many. Well, it's just, many... This, this is a very arcade game. I was never super fond of arcade games where the whole point is to die a fucking lot. Uh, it's <laughs> entirely procedurally generated with no... It's a full, like, roguelike. There's nothing carried over between... Uh, playthroughs um and you start out with no power-ups just a the only just a pick that can only dig through dirt pretty much uh in one hit and anything harder which there's rapidly mostly stuff that's harder takes two uh what you dig through you can pick up coal rock and very coins and various ores and when you dig down a certain distance uh, you get to the end of the arbitrary level, which is marked with a vending machine in which you can buy uh, bombs and stuff. And then a couple of steps further down, a forge in which you can buy uh, upgrades to your uh, digging implement or better digging implements. Um, as you go down, the enemies get more complicated. Um and the uh, terrain gets more complicated. Um, so you need better gear, um, but um, you're not always guaranteed to get enough to forge a thing before you get to the uh, end. Yeah, the, the forge uh, uses coal and the metals um, to make gear and the shop uses actual money and sometimes one of the other things too uh there are also there's a chance you'll come across a power up a room which j can have like a better or not that much better or way better um digging implement they can have bombs they can have extra hearts although sometimes you can just find extra hearts and there's no, like, maximum life in this game. Uh, you can always uh, pick up a heart and just it'll just increase the number of hits you can take. Um, there's power-up right there. That one is explosion-proof, which is extremely useful because fairly regularly there will be, like, TNT things that just explode when you hit them and you sometimes need to hit them to get through. Uh, you can usually jump up to a place. It's procedurally generated in that you'll, like, recognize certain chunks of level as being repeated. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't actually think this is a bad game overall, but it's a little bit jank. Uh, you di when you dig down, you dig one square, and it can be a little bit tricky to fall into a one-square hole if it's not against a wall because you bounce. Uh, the muncher guys that can go back and forth and up but can't go down uh, can be a little bit tricky to get o get past or jump over because uh, sometimes they can get into a chunk of level that I think they weren't entirely designed for. Um, also, I take a small issue with the way that this game does its options menu, which is... Um, that there is at the start at the start of the game you just get into the game and then before the timer starts the timer being that the cave is collapsing above you um there's an area where you can dig and there are um 
blocks that you can hit to turn on the sound effects and music and uh looks like uh, there's an option for rumble on the switch and it looks like there are different options on the pc version but that's where those are so petty when you see one of those squares with the three things on each side and the thing in the middle that's usually a good thing noted there isn't much in the way of directions on this there isn't much that you do the only complicate you press left or right to dig uh the only complicated things are that if you get a bomb you press try to dig up to use the bomb and uh, if you dig down in midair, you actually shoot out a bullet, which is the only way you can kill some enemies. Because uh, the ones that go back and forth and have a shield on their shields on their sides, they're completely invincible from the sides, as far as I can tell. Uh, at the end of the stages, there's also some of the power ups are just like increased range and increased power, which are normally what you get more of when you power up your uh, t- digging implement. Because you can get a, there are what, copper, iron, steel, uh, gold, and diamonds. There might be silver. I don't remember. I'm not looking at the thing off the top of my head. Um, and each one of those, I believe, increases, no, just, just gold and diamond, no silver. And it just increases your, um, how hard you can dig. And there are picks, which have a range of one, and shovels, which have a range of two. Uh, that's about it. It's it's pretty simple. It's an arcade style game. Uh, blocks with bombs on them can only be broken by explosions, such as from TNT. Um, and yeah, you have to get to the you have to get to the end of the first level. Which playing this, it can take a while before you'll get to the end of the first level, because it's an arcade style game where you're where it gets hard. And unlike a lot of actual arcade games. You can't memorize it because it's procedural. Mm-hmm. I think I would like this game if the balance were tuned like a step or two easier. Like if you started out with three uh, hearts instead of two, three or four, or if you were like guaranteed you could manipulate the odds to be more likely to get a power up in the first zone. Because when I get a power up in the first zone, regardless of what it is, um, explosion proof is a big help. A good shovel is a big help, or a good pick even. Um, so, like that's an iron pick. It looks like. So yeah, if you can get one of those early on, uh, it's much easier to get a little bit further. Um, but nothing like replenishes on level break. It's just like a mental break and it's the phase at which stuff starts getting easier or harder rather uh, where, where stuff changes um, uh, I don't know do you guys have any questions I think I'm, I feel like I'm losing my train of thought a little bit because I'm watching Petty Fan play and it's giving me I don't want to say giving me flashbacks because that implies that it's worse than it is but <laughs> I find the game kind of frustrating, but not necessarily in a terrible way. I get, it's a difficult game. Mm-hmm. But it, it feels like it was designed to be difficult, as if you actually had to pay actual quarters to play again. Yeah. like, um, And honestly, in terms of... I'm not sure if this is a genre, but I can think of at least a couple of games like on steam that are better than this, like Mr. Driller drill land and the steam world dig series. Yeah. That's the main issue with this is that there are other better, uh, digging games probably, but this is a very arcadey one. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. There, in addition to regular TNT, there's CTN regular TNT blows up and down one square from where the box is. And also, the entire horizontal row. CTNT, I think, is like contained TNT. It only blows up the actual squares that it's on. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's a good array of enemies. You usually get a chance to see them before they're before they're a threat to figure out what they're doing. That's one of the guys that's completely invincible from the side. By the way, mm-hmm. see, he has like shields. You have to hit the TNT. 
I thought I hit it. Uh, any, you know, what I, like it, it, it doesn't feel like it's super unfair. It mostly feels like you fucked up and you could do better. But uh, I don't know. I can't claim to have gotten super far. I think I right. got to stage once and then died immediately because I only had one heart left. Yeah, the console version does actually have uh, consistent uh, instructions on the first screen. Hmm. So yeah, um, I actually kind of recommend this if you like digging and or arcade style games, but otherwise it could be a bit of a hard sell. Uh, the yeah. music is basically non-existent. It's beep boops and not even much of them. Yeah. And the graphics are uh, no descripts. Like, I, I'm not sure if it's, uh, I can really say it's a retro style. Like, it's 8 bit ish, pretty much. Mm hmm. Like, maybe 8 bit computer. Like, it's aping, say, Boulder Dash. Yeah, it doesn't look like a console game. It looks like a arcade or um, PC game. Mm hmm. And I, mean, I guess you could see like an NES port of this or something, but that's about it. Yeah. And yeah, it's a decent game, but like you, you stack it up against, say, SteamWorld Dig, and oof, this game looks rough in comparison. Yeah, the main thing is that there are other digging games if you're just into the concept of digging, and they're probably better. Right. I mean, I suppose the saving grace here is in terms of pricing. So the game will uh, clocks in at uh, four dollars ninety nine cents. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I'd say it's worth that. Yeah, uh, I'm like uh, get super bored by simple games. Uh, you can also do a like double jump by jumping and then digging down, but like fucking who has the time for that shit? <laughs> You're usually trying to get down faster because fucking the ceiling's collapsing on you. Right. <laughs> no time to think. Mm hmm Yeah. Also, if you want a superior um, downward game that doesn't involve digging, down well. That's the one where you shoot down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... You know, it's going downwards. It's just, um, you know, yeah, you you shoot down instead of dig down. Um, anyway, so yeah, I think that's about it for Pity Pit here. And yeah, it's it's a very simple game. There's not a whole lot to it, and it's actually not bad. Just a little frustrating, but mostly in a satisfying way. Wait, the fuck is that? Shotgun. <laughs> No, that was Apparently there's a fucking <laughs> shotgun power up. Let's see if I can figure out how to use it. <laughs> well, while he does that, we'll uh, wrap up here. Um, yeah. So. Uh, uh, that... okay. It's when you're. It makes it. So when you shoot down, it goes in multiple directions. Yeah. Anyway, so that'll about do it for a review session here. Uh, the week ahead, I guess I should actually mention uh, Friday's show. Uh, yeah. We didn't have one mainly because the guest canceled at almost the last minute there. Like, uh, I, I got an email at about seven o'clock in the morning stating that something had come up and he couldn't do it and, you know, apologized for wasting our time. And, you know, like it was close enough where, um, we, you know, we got the, you know, we, we, we got the display code, um, like just the night before. But, we are seeing if we can't do that another week, but nothing's concrete so far. Um, so with that in mind, um, on Wednesday, July 16th, we'll be having, um, I may mangle this last name. It's not foreign. It's just long and unconventional. Mark Lef Lefrem Boise. Lafram, well, I don't know how the fuck they pronounce that. It's from French, but that doesn't mean they pronounce it right. Right. Um, we might. Uh, we'll probably ask either for clarification or just 
not mention his last name. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, of, the town in Iowa, the town in Iowa or Idaho isn't Blas. Right. Um, anyway, he is of Lightning Rod Games. Um, they are the developers of A Fold Apart. Um, this is an interesting game, if nothing else. It's a, um, it's a puzzle game. Uh, the aesthetic is folding paper. That's where the name comes from. And it's also about, uh, long distance romance. I'm like, um, I hear it sucks. I wouldn't know. I Long haven't... distance romance, not the game. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I have heard this as well. Like, it's more, it's difficult to maintain. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, we'll be talking about this on uh, Wednesday. And no Friday show uh, currently. Maybe if I hear something from um, Nathan on Monday. Um, or Tuesday, we might have a Friday show, but, um, you know, and I'll have the requisite update on Wednesday, but until that happens, no Friday show at this particular moment in time. Um, so until Wednesday, I shall wish you good gaming.